Good morning. This is Dr. Jeff Dahlberg, and I'm standing in front of the 2020 sorghum demonstration block for forage sorghums. Um, there's quite a bit of confusion about sorghum. When somebody says sorghum, they might say Milo. Milo is a term that's used quite a bit in uh, the sorghum belt, but it also really means grain sorghum. So typically, if you say Milo, you're talking about these small, short grain sorghums with a nice panicle on them. These are called traditionally combined height because this was the height that a combine would come through to cut that sorghum panicle. So you heard for many, many, many years, combine height, that's what that meant. We're now getting into some of the forage sorghums and this isn't the best representation, but it's also a brown midrib and I'll talk a little bit about that. But you can see the height difference. So this is what's called a dual purpose sorghum. So you can cut it either for grain or in the case of out here in California and many other places, you might cut this for silage. Um, typically, sorghums um, have fairly decent lignin, but about 1970, there was a gene called the BMR, brown midrib trait, that was found and we started moving that trait into our forage sorghums because it produced forage sorghums with less lignin. Less lignin meant, meant better digestibility for the animal. And the big difference is that if I cut this open, this will be almost brown cinnamon color inside. And on the leaves, on the midrib, this midrib will be brown. And that's why it's called brown midrib. Now the problem with lignin is, is that lignins are like the building uh, blocks or the steel girders of a tower. And if you take the steel girders out and you take the building blocks out, what happens? These things will fall over and lodge. And that was a problem early on with our BMRs. Um, uh, that we put a lot of BMRs into a lot of our forages and it would really cause big lodging problems. But we found another trait, it's called the rachitic gene. And in sorghum, sorghum typically has long internodes. So what's an internode? That's the space between where one leaf starts and the next. And you can usually typically see they'll be pretty long on forage sorghum, so about that long. Well, this rachitic gene actually causes the internodes to get smaller. So what happens is you get more of these internodes Instead of being like this in between internodes, you shrink them down like this, and that gives more stability and strength to the panicle, uh, I mean to the stem, and you get a lot less lodging. So you'll see some of that in these forages as well. Much better digestibility. And then the other thing you'll see in sorghum is what's called a fallopian sensitive. Now this is only about 60 days old right now. By the time we get ready to harvest, this will probably be close to 10 feet tall. Photoperiod sensitive sorghum means it won't flower here in the United States until really late in the late October, November, when the days start getting shorter. What this is really good for is producing high tonnage, so lots of tonnage. In terms of digestibility, this might not be the best thing for an animal. Um, it's you know, just a lot of uh, uh, forage material for the animal to eat. However, we are putting brown midrib into these photoperiod sensitive things that'll make those much more digestible as well. So why would you want to plant forage sorghums? Most people in California use a lot of corn, alfalfa, um, and those who use a lot of water. One of the really nice things about forage sorghums and sorghums in general is it's one of the most drought tolerant crops that we grow in the world actually. Sorghum forages will use about a half to a third of the water that corn silage does. So in a state like California that's having real struggles with water, um, you know, we go through these feast or famine times for water here in the state, forage sorghums could be a really nice alternative for dairy feed production. Now, one of the things that you have to be careful of is forage sorghums are not corn. And so your nutrition people will have to formulate the feed a little bit differently when they're using forage sorghum than when they're using corn silage. But essentially, for half the water and a little bit of different feed, um, 
build up, it'll do just as well as corn.